Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Recently, we've tackled some hard subjects, like God, religion, and ethics, and this time I thought it might be a good idea to take a step back and make good on a promise I made a while ago. Back in the introduction video to this series, I said that I was planning to look at my own worldview honestly to avoid hypocrisy. This, of course, means looking honestly at the major challenges and objections to that worldview to see whether they have greater proof behind them than what I've already presented in Catholicism's behalf. To start with, I'll be talking about the best objections of atheists to a religious worldview, and that will mainly be the focus of at least the next 12 episodes. The best arguments that I've found on behalf of atheism. How do they hold up, logically? Are any of them provable? Today's atheist argument is, According to science, God does not exist. This is because science can't prove God's existence through any means. Because of this, God can't be considered a factor in scientific study, and therefore scientifically doesn't exist. This argument is interesting because there are many ways in which one can interpret it. This kind of argument could be used by a person who subscribes to scientism. But as we've disproven scientism, I won't really address that aspect of it. There's also an undercurrent here of, if we don't have evidence of something, it doesn't exist. This claim, however, is simply ridiculous. When a bank is robbed and the police have no evidence as to the identity of the bank robber, it doesn't follow that the bank robber's identity doesn't exist. In the same way, lacking evidence of God doesn't prove that God doesn't exist. You could also interpret this claim to mean that God's effect on the universe is either negligible or eternally constant, and either way it's impossible to test for it. I actually agree with this. Testing for God's presence using the scientific method isn't strictly possible. But again, all this proves is that infinite things can't be measured, and no theist would disagree with that. It doesn't prove that God doesn't exist. The only other interpretation of this claim is that because you can't demonstrate God's existence with science alone, he therefore can't exist because the word exist is a word used by scientists to denote scientific relevancy. And if that's really what this claim means, then there's not much validity to it. If a scientist uses the term, I've proven that God does not exist, to mean, I've proven that God is not provable using science alone, then he's using that term only in the context of the community of scientists who honor that definition of the word exist. When the general public, however, hear these words, they think the scientist has actually proven that God does not exist as an actual being, not just a scientific factor. It's disingenuous to allow ordinary people to misinterpret your words in this way because you didn't clarify the proper context for those words. However, proving that God isn't a factor in scientific measurement and proving that God doesn't exist are two different things, and anyone who claims they're not is committing the logical fallacy of equivocation, using a term that has more than one meaning in a deliberate attempt to confuse people. Consider the following deductive argument. My best friend's name is Jack. A Jack is a children's toy. Therefore, my best friend's name is a children's toy. This is the fallacy of equivocation in action. The same word is used in both of the premises of the argument, but in one, it's meant to denote a toy, and in the other, a proper name. Because this argument contains a fallacy, the conclusion is unreliable. The same is true of claiming that science can prove that God does not exist. To extrapolate God's actual non-existence from this statement is equivocation and nothing else. Lastly, I've heard certain people claim that we need to widen the meaning of proof in order to see the real value of this claim. However, I've never heard anyone sufficiently explain why we need to change the meaning of another word to get at the truth, or just how it would lead to anything other than more equivocation when the new definition conflicts with the old, confusing even more people. Because of this, I simply don't see the validity of this claim, and it certainly doesn't offer strong enough proof to challenge the evidence for the existence of God. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.